I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm excited to journey with you as we learn how to take our health back. We are coming to you live from my home office in Makiki and from the studios of Think Tech Hawaii, which is located in downtown Honolulu. Today, we shall be chatting with one of America's greatest women's water polo player who brought home the silver medal from the 2000 Olympics in Sydney, Australia. Her name is Maureen O'Toole or known by her teammates and students as Mo. <laughs> Today, Maureen will be sharing with us why your health is everything. What Maureen would like you to share, or what would Maureen would like to share with you today is, if you have your health, hard work, and never quit, you can achieve anything. Welcome, Maureen O'Toole. Thank Aloha. you so much for having me. I always feel like uh, Hawaii is my second home since I went to University of Hawaii and was there as a swimmer. So I wow. love being in stuff like this. And you, you have a great history behind you. Um, I tagged you as one of the uh, America's finest water polo player. And so you've had a journey and a very exciting journey. So let us go back to the Olympics. Okay, that's what we're all here to hear about. So you just yeah. heard that the women's uh, water polo was added to the 2000 Olympics for Sydney, Australia. Tell me about that and your path to get there. Oh, wow. It's a long path, but I'll, I'll do it in a quick manner. But uh, <laughs> I first heard about it when I was coaching at University of California at Berkeley, and I was reading the San Francisco Chronicle, and it was one sentence saying, women's water polo added to the 2000 Olympics. But the journey was long and hard and um, it started back in 1976. Uh, I started playing on the national team at 15. I played in 1984. We did a demonstration for the Olympics and we thought they would add it in 1988. We thought they would add it in 1992. They didn't, 96, they didn't. So I actually retired in 1996. And um, then it was October of 1997. Oh no, I retired in 1994 after the world championships and um, in October of 97, they added women's water polo to the Olympics. And I was like, I didn't really believe it because we had pushed for so hard for so many years. And uh, when I got to my office at Berkeley, my old coach called and said, Mo, did you hear they added women's water polo to the Olympics? And I was like, really, is it really true? And she said, yeah, it's true. Do you want to come out of retirement? And at that time I had a five-year-old and I thought about it for about 30 seconds, and I was like, yes, I do, and it was a month later that I came to Australia to play in the world championships, so a month after being retired for three years, I got myself in the best shape I could, and um, played in the world championships in 1998. Wow, what an exciting journey, and now you're going to the Olympics, and now your daughter, Kelly, She's going to be eight years old at the Olympics. How were you going to handle that? Well, that's a great question. <laughs> uh, was why I, that was why I hesitated for 30 seconds. <laughs> had I not had a child, I wouldn't have hesitated for any seconds. But I, <laughs> I wondered that. It was, had we had our old coach, um, I think it would have been a little more doable. But we didn't know who our coach was going to be at that time. And our new coach was all business. So having a child was definitely not a preference in his mind. He liked uh, younger players, wasn't a big fan of older players. And um, I was living in Northern California. My daughter was in a great school across the street from Cal Berkeley. Everything was going fantastic. And I was going to have to move back to Southern California, which is where I'm from. So it was very, very helpful that we did train there because I had my family to help. And um, the first year we went into full time training, trained seven hours a day, six days a week. And my daughter actually went to the same elementary school that I went to. I lived with my brother and his wife. And I one of my memories was I was so tired because I was doing this at 37, 38, and 39 years old. I was so tired and, and I would I would walk my daughter to school in the morning and it crushed me because she didn't know anybody. And I was like, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? It's so selfish. <laughs> and, um, and then I would pick her up in the afternoon or my brother would pick her up and then I would get home from practice and she was only in first grade, but I was like trying to do 
homework with her and I would every night I would fall asleep so <laughs> it was it was hard it was a really hard journey I didn't get to see her a lot I never got to take her on any trips with me uh, my family really stepped up and I'm so grateful for my brother my sister and my mom for really helping with that wow but you know i'm just going to give you a piece of uh, advice or com comfort don't feel guilty um you were training for one of the greatest events of a lifetime and i know that your daughter uh, now looking forward has all forgiven you and in fact has grown so much because of your dedication so don't ever feel bad like oh my gosh guilty because we all have done that and even <laughs> housewives who have nothing, I mean, other than to do than take care of a house and kids, they fall asleep with their kids doing homework. Because that's not one of them. <laughs> so don't feel bad, Maureen. So don't feel bad at all. But you know, you were one of, at that time, weren't you one of the oldest Olympian, Olympians uh, to compete? Well, I mean, I definitely think like in the equestrian and that kind of sporting events, sailing, there are older athletes, but I was the oldest water polo player by, I think the next young, next oldest person was eight years younger. The average age of our Olympic team with me in the equation at 39 was 21. Whoa. We wow. Yeah. Wow. You show them, girl. You show them what we can do. <laughs> it was hard. It yeah. was hard. Yeah. So I know that, you know, you in the beginning, you encountered some um, challenges. You know, you may have gotten sick and the, the, the course of, uh, the practice hours, you got to share with us the hours that you practice. What does it take to be an Olympian? And when did you realize how important nutrition was going to be for you? Okay, great question. So we got back from the world championships and at the world championships, we had to finish in the top eight to make the qualification tournament for the Olympics because there were only going to be six teams in the first ever Olympics. By the way, it took a hundred years to add women's water polo to the Olympics. Men's water polo is the oldest team sport in the Olympics. So a hundred years later, we get in and not to brag at all, but when I was playing, I was the best player in the world. So I came out of retirement and it never thought, oh, you know, I, am I going to make this team? It was more like, we need to qualify for this. It's going to be really hard because only six teams make it, but I never put into the equation, will I make it? But at the first practice that we had, we got a new coach who was very difficult. And he called me into the office. He had actually helped, asked me if I would help him get the job, but I kind of wanted to stay silent because there were, there were other coaches that I liked as well. So I thought, I don't want to get involved in this. So the right. first day of practice, he called me into the office and he said, Mo, you're old and you're going to be really old at the Olympics and you'll be lucky if you make this team. And I... I just remember driving home after practice that night being mad because I was like, God, this is, they finally added women's water polo to the Olympics. And now he's questioning, like telling me that I'll be lucky if I make the team. So it was the first time in my life that I really thought, okay, I really do need to think about nutrition because maybe I am going to be old. And um, so I thought about nutrition, but I didn't do a whole lot. I knew enough that Fruits and vegetables are super important in your diet. So I'm going to eat a lot of fruits and vegetables and it's going to be great. Well, we went down to Southern California into full-time training. We trained seven hours a day, six days a week. And people often ask me how hard that was. And the only closest way that I can explain it to where everybody would understand is I would say, think of the hardest thing that you've ever done in your life. And you had to come home and lay on the couch the rest of the day. And then three hours later, you have to do that again, six oh. days a week for three years. And that's truly how hard it was. But after we went into, we were into two weeks of full-time training. I had never missed a national team practice in my life. In my, I played for 23 years internationally, never missed a practice in my life. I got totally sick with the flu and I couldn't get better. I was sick for eight days. And I remember the president of U.S. Water Polo called me and said, hey, Mo, how are you doing? What's going on? Because the coach never called me. I think he was probably thinking, yep, told her she was too old. She couldn't She's do it. She's too old. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, yeah, uh, he said, hey, you know, Juice Plus is sponsoring you guys. I mean, are you taking your Juice Plus? Well, I didn't really know what it was. So I, I laid there on the couch, looked it up, researched it out realized it was whole food nutrition, which really interested me. And it was fruits and vegetables in a capsule. 
can't hurt. Might as well take it. So it was that day. That I, yeah. And it was that day that I started taking it and I took it religiously for three years because as the younger girls were taking it, they weren't taking it as consistently as I was because wow. I knew I needed an extra edge if I was going to make this team. And I, I couldn't afford to get sick and I couldn't afford to get hurt. I never had had an injury before, so I felt good about that. And, um, and, and through the three years, you know, we traveled the world, um, slept in, you know, didn't get lack of sleep, the whole thing. And I never once got sick with the flu, got sick with the cold, nothing. So it, I, and I just really tried to take care of myself is more than just juice plus is drinking lots of water, recovering as soon as you get out of practice. The juice plus just kind of, I think, really put me over the edge to keep me wow. going. And you know, Maureen, I know you train hours and hours on end in the pool with water. Do you also have to run and do other cardio and work out and, um, you know, in the gym? Did you also do that? Oh. <laughs> yeah well just like for you Americans I'm sure you guys most of you know who Bobby Knight is he's the Indiana basketball coach for years that's what our coach was like or if you watch the miracle the um, 1980 hockey team mm -hmm. our coach was like that um, yeah yeah we ran two and a half miles to the gym three mornings a week and he would drive there and he would watch like what place you would come in so for me being tested at my age, I was the same age as him. I had to go all out because I wanted to make sure I was in the front of the pack. Then we would do weights for an hour and we would run back. And then we would be dripping wet with sweat and have two minutes to put our swimsuits on. Yeah. And he would I'll never forget. He was yelling two minutes and everybody's like family <laughs> one minute. And then two other days a week we did um, plyometrics. So it was all at the pool where you're like jumping and, doing all kinds of different stuff. And then again, two minutes to get your swimsuits on and we would do swim conditioning for two hours. Our mornings were, were so brutal that by the afternoons when we actually got to do water polo stuff and scrimmage, none of us wanted to do it because we were so tired. It wow. was just, it was rough. It was hard, really hard. And it wasn't just hard for me. You know, the younger girls, there every day somebody was in the locker room crying. And as the older one, I feel like that was the edge I had was the mental, mental toughness. And it was a dream I had my whole life to go to the Olympics. So I was, I'm going to use, I love Bear Grylls. I'm going to use his NGU, never give up because I, I was no way was I going to give up or let any of them give up because I, we almost felt like we were giving into him if we gave up. So we were a team. Wow. That's amazing. I mean, even just getting in and out of your suit, <laughs> <laughs> that to me already is uh, the Olympic training right there, right? This is just the life of an Olympian and going yeah. in and out of a wet suit. I mean, guys, they don't understand that, but that thing is skin tight. Your skin is wet. It doesn't budge. It's stuck on your thighs. <laughs> it doesn't go anywhere. So that should go just to go in and out of that. That's like, okay, just that's all you need. Just go in and out of your suits, your wet yeah. suits. <laughs> <laughs> I okay. wish. <laughs> so they say water polo is one of the hardest uh, sports in the Olympics. How was that at 39 years of age? Must have been even tougher for you then. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I remember it was one of the I did a lot of interviews at the Olympics because I was older and I had a child. So it was a story. And that was one of the first questions they asked or told, one of the first things they told me is, do you know that that water polo is considered the hardest sport in the Olympics? I was like, oh, wow. OK, I mean, I know it's hard. It's very, very physical. But what was really hard. Um, yeah. At 39, you just don't recover. And <laughs> and you really it really is all about nutrition, because I, I wish I knew than what I know now about nutrition, because I've learned so much more about nutrition. I, I feel like I could have been a lot better because the bottom line is you're just not recovering. When you're training that much, you're not recovering. The 21 year olds, the 18 year olds, they're recovering a lot faster than I am. So it's the cumulative effect of it. You know, six days a week, uh, week 11, year two, I started at 36 then 37, 38, 39. So I was three years older and three years more tired at the Olympics. And we played in, in that first ever Olympics, the Olympics last for two weeks. We played the first week. So we played seven games in eight days and every single game mattered. 
So it was, <laughs> it was exhausting. It was hard. It was um, physically draining. And um, I just felt like one of the edges I had was I was pretty mentally tough. So I just kept telling myself, and this is what I want to do. This is good. So. This is good. Well, that sheer <laughs> determination, physical attributes, nutrition, intake, um, you know, these are all little tips that I'm hoping everybody's writing down. How do, how do you train to be an Olympian? And even if just the Olympian in life, just living life, especially in these, these times, we just need to remember all these tips just to get through daily life. So, um, so I, I consider us all Olympians at this point in this game right now. So you played in the gold medal game of the first ever Olympics for women's water polo. Tell me, how was that? I mean, you made history. You were on the first time, first team, the first women's water polo team for the USA. Tell me what it was like. It was, it was so incredible. And at 39, I knew this was it for me. This was the only one I was going to get to do. So I like took in every single second of it. But the actual gold medal, the day of the gold medal game, we played at 930 at night. So it was a long day. Wait, wait, wait. We have practice oh. in the morning. Oh. We get there at night and uh, we had warm up and it was like behind a big wall. So it was in a different pool, but you could hear the bronze medal game going on. And they had a big screen TV up in the pool where we were warming up. And um, it was, it was so much like I was, I think I was more excited than nervous. I was nervous for sure because you know, and it was, it was nervous about, to me, it's always about no matter what you do in life, as long as you just do your best, your best that you can possibly do, then that's, that's all you can ask for. But it's just getting to that point where it's going to start. So we had to all like get into this. Uh, we played Australia, which was amazing in Australia. Biggest crowd ever to see a water polo match. 18,000 people sold out standing room only. Wow. And, um, uh, playing Australia was awesome because they were a big factor in getting women's water polo into the Olympics. And so that was, that was really fun. And we were friends with them, but we had to stand in this room where it was like, you know, body to body, wait, wait till we go and you march out and you walk around the pool to line up. And NBC had brought my daughter and my family down onto the front row to watch the game. And so as we're walking along to do our lineup, Kelly, my daughter is hanging over the ledge, mommy, mommy. And I was like, oh. I'm done. I don't even need to play this. this is <laughs> I won the game. I won. Yeah, it's so over. I, this is great. Oh, mommy moment. And, <laughs> the game was an interesting game. It was um, very, very unusual, low scoring, two to two going into the fourth quarter. And it was really just because the referees basically swallowed their whistles and just let us play. And it was wow. physical and it was hard. And when they're not blowing whistles or calling ejections, there's not a lot of goal scoring. So it's a very, very difficult game. And um, it came down, we scored with 13 seconds to go to tie it, came down to the last 13 seconds. We were all like, oh, I'm thinking to myself, oh, oh my gosh, this is going to go into overtime. There's nobody in better shape than us in the world. We by far had the hardest coach. We're going to freaking win this thing. And we were seated <laughs> if that is six teams going into the Olympics. And a lot of weird stuff happened for most people that are listening, probably haven't seen water polo, but at the end of the day, um, a lot of weird stuff happened in the last two seconds. And in the last, with 0.4 seconds on the clock, Australia scored on a controversial call. And um, we, uh, well, we didn't think it was gonna count. We thought it was gonna go into overtime and our coach went to protest and he came back and said, oh, goal is counted, it's over. And as an athlete, you know, you just really like things to end in closure. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't really clear closure. No bad feelings about it at all. Honestly, 20 years later, I feel like I've learned more by losing that game than by winning that game. Wow. And um, at the end of the game, NBC had brought Kelly down on the pool deck and I was pretty upset. I was like, <laughs> God, how did she get down here? Because she came running to me. And she <laughs> saw that I was upset and she started crying. And um, yeah, it was hard. And NBC, NBC said, so Maureen, how does it feel to lose the gold medal in the last one second? Oh, ouch, ouch. Yeah. And I remember standing there for probably a good 30 seconds thinking, what do I say? I gotta be positive. <laughs> how am I positive about this? But really, again, I, I learned so much because it's really about the journey. 
it's not about the last one second of the gold medal game. It's about the journey of getting women's water polo into the Olympics, making the Olympic team, walking through the tunnel of opening ceremonies, and ultimately getting to play in the gold medal game of the Olympics and and getting and having a daughter and getting her to be there and watch it and be part of it. Wow. I feel pretty, pretty blessed. Pretty good. You are so blessed. You are the gold medal player of the team, man. I know it. <laughs> I know it. And then you have uh, Kelly. Platinum. <laughs> <laughs> You're a platinum. <laughs> there you go. So now what was it like? being on the medal stand with America's flag and uh, overhead hanging proudly. And then they, they play the, 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 the anthem, right? The national anthem. Only, only, like? the winner. only Australia. Oh, um, shucks. <laughs> yeah. You know, you it, 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 I was very proud. I was very proud to represent America. It was, our team was such a team and we were so tight that no matter what happened, in our journey, we were there and we were together and we had each other. Um, but, you know, when you think about it, you're on the medal stand at the Olympics in a team sport and you're the only one on, only one on the medal stand that's just lost. The bronze medal, they won their game. The gold medals, they won their game and we are the only one that's lost. So it was hard. It was hard and it was hard the way it ended in the last one second. But at the end of the day, the fact that we got a medal it was an Yay. amazing experience. And then right. um, we we kind of joked afterwards that the women's soccer team had lost on a handball. And we just we all decided that we have the platinum medal, which is one step above the gold. So it's much prettier <laughs> anyway. <laughs> it is prettier. And it's so, so platinum goes with everything. So you can wear it with every every dress, exactly. every black tie event exactly. you go. Just wear it proudly, girl. <laughs> so again, I, I mean, it's got to have been the best life lesson for you, for your daughter to be there. How how proud were you to have Kelly, your daughter, there? Yeah, I mean, it. the whole journey was very hard to have Kelly um, because I didn't get to see her a lot. And so when the gold medal game ended, I had to go into a ton of interviews and because NBC had brought her down on the pool deck, there was so much more than just having her in my arms. It was getting my daughter back. I'm done. I'm never going to play again. I have her in my arms. I went through all the interviews with her. I had to go to a press conference. I didn't, and our whole, all of our families and friends had set up a party for just us with nobody else there. I didn't get there until probably three hours after, but I had my daughter Kelly and to have her be there and, and through all the hard trials and tribulations that we had and have her in my arms with me, she was eight now, and be able to watch this as, as a little girl, even wow. more so, yes. to get to watch this experience. I don't think she really truly understood it. Mm -hmm. I think she understands it now, but I remember NBC had asked her, are you gonna play water polo? And, and what she saw of it, she goes, oh no, I don't wanna <laughs> have my head pushed down and my shoulders pulled back. <laughs> That's what she saw. But as you saw in that picture, you could tell she was like pretty excited. And it was, wow. it was wow, it was so fun to have her there. Wow, look at that. That joy. Yeah. What a smile. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Love, love it. My mom back there. My nobody was more proud than my mom. And my right. dad had passed away uh, while we were training for the Olympics. So that was like super hard because my dad was so proud of me. And I remember going into the semifinal game, which was a super, we played Holland and Holland had never not been in the finals of a big tournament in the history of women's water polo. So playing them in the semifinal was super scary and they were a very seasoned veteran team. Wow. And um, I, this one girl just kept kicking me and telling me that I was old and we're never going to make it. And I just remember thinking of my dad and I was like, I got to do this for my dad. I got to do this for my dad. And it, it really hey, did. Dad. <laughs> Boy, family, everything. I, I love the family commitment and the family ties. So now oh, yeah. years have passed. You're not 39 years anymore. So what are you doing now, Maureen? Oh, so now I'm 59. <laughs> yeah, 20 years yeah. anniversary, right? You just celebrated. Yeah, just had the 20 year anniversary and I'm living in Australia, which is just Whoa. really, really odd. But my yeah. daughter, daughter played water polo all through college, played on the national team a little bit. But we, um, she came over here to play water polo for fun. 
And um, there was a job opening to coach National League Water Polo. And my husband and I had been running a club and we're kind of winding down. And we came over here to Australia and I was coaching National League Water Polo and COVID hit, um, got canceled. We came three hours south of where we were living before. And I have now just completely come back into really thinking about nutrition and trying to help people as much as I can through these hard times. So wow. really focused on Juice Plus and nutrition and helping people stay healthy or get healthy during these just unprecedented times. Wow. So, you know, I know you keep mentioning Juice Plus, so that's fruits and vegetables, but how did Juice Plus uh, ultimately play a role in your Olympic experience? Yeah, great question. So after the Olympics were over, I actually wrote Juice Plus a letter thanking them for, um, for sponsoring us. I truly, to this day, believe I don't think I would have made the Olympics if it wasn't for Juice Plus because it kept me healthy. It kept me um, from getting sick, from getting flus, colds, probably helping me recovering. Well, I only say probably because it is whole food nutrition and it's fruits and vegetables. And I was only taking two capsules a day. I should have been taking like six a day to help me recover. That's why I said, I wish I knew then what I know now, but yeah, if it wasn't for Juice Plus, I honestly believe I wouldn't have made the Olympics. So I am forever grateful for them. And any time that I can give back to them, I really try to. Wow. And I know that because of your testimony to Juice Plus, they send you all over the place. And that's where we kind of met at a conference. And I know that that's that we met you um, while you were on stage and giving your story and your testimony. And I became friends with you because you are like a Hawaiian girl. I just felt that aloha in you. And um, even as we speak now, I know that you have the opportunity to come back to live in Hawaii because you have a home on the big island. Correct. Yeah, correct? I, yes, I have a home in Kona and we're just kind of just waiting for our world to come back to what it was as we knew it. Right, like we all are. But we have a quick a few seconds left. So Maureen, before we sign off, I just want to ask you, can you just, you know, this world of COVID and all these um, <clears throat> times going on around the world. Can you just leave us with some words of encouragement um, to just just encourage and inspire us forward? Yeah, I think, you know, in these unprecedented times, it's like none of us really know what to do because none of us have really experienced it. But I think it's a time to slow down and, and reflect on and really like uh, experience nature, experience uh, your family, take time for it because our world was on such a fast paced thing. I think you almost wonder if nature just said, hey, whoa, time out, let's slow down. And, and really at the end of the day, we, if we don't have our health, we don't have anything. Our health is so important. And so you have to take that time. You have to be disciplined. You have to um, understand and be focused of why your health is so important and what you put it, you are what you eat. You know, I always compare it to a, a car. If you put water in a car, it's not going to work. Right. You know, if you put sodas in your body, it's not, it's going to work, but it's not going to work very well. And so if there's anything that I can do is it stay positive, be nice to everybody, because at the end of the day, we all have each other. And we have each other to inspire each other. And, and But again, if you don't have your health, you, you really That's don't right. have anything. So take care of yourselves and be disciplined to eat healthy. So listen up, everybody. Just take some time to reflect, build on family and relationships to get us through all these times. And I think that's the greatest message of all. Just love one another and fill each yeah. other with aloha and continue to give aloha out. So we wanna say mahalo to you, Maureen, for sharing your experience and bringing the 2000 Olympics alive again. And it's always great hearing of your story and your journey and encouragement. So from Hawaii to you, aloha. Aloha, thank you so much. <laughs>